The Franklin H. Williams Judicial Commission was established 30 years ago by then Chief Judge Sal Wachler. The following is a brief segment of an interview with Judge Wachler in which he discusses the factors and forces that led him to establish the commission. I'm John Carr, Senior Advisor for Strategic and Technical Communications. You've told me that even as a young associate on the Court of Appeals, you were the words you used were troubled and embarrassed by the lack of diversity in the judicial system and of one of the largest and most diverse states in the country. What was what was bothering you, and, and uh, why did you care? I guess a lot of it came from my upbringing. I was raised in the South, and um, I was appalled by the um, outrageous bigotry. I mean, harsh, cruel bigotry. So it wasn't only uh, keeping blacks out of your life. It was a question of uh, not having them be part of your community. They lived in a separate part of town. Uh, there were curfews at night that governed them. They couldn't sit at a lunch counter. Uh, Frank Williams was in the army during World War II. Uh, that was a segregated army. And uh, I came in the army shortly thereafter, and I was in Augusta, Georgia, training military police and interacting with the Augusta Police Department. And I saw the cruelty of bigotry. And uh, the army was just in its process of being integrated at that time. And uh, the um, blacks were terribly persecuted in the army as soldiers. So it was something that um, bothered me morally and uh, as a civilized person. When I came north, I found that there was the same pushback away from members of the African-American community. I became town supervisor. There wasn't a single uh, African-American in town government. Uh, when I went on the bench in Nassau County, there was one African-American judge who was in the district court, which was the low court. Court personnel, there were two uh, uh, low-level clerks uh, who were black. All the rest were white. Uh, when I went on the Court of Appeals, there were no African Americans on the court. There were no African American employees in the Court of Appeals Hall. Uh, that all was changed, but uh, it was um, wrong for the state of New York to give this um, uh, image of being a liberal, uh, progressive state and yet have. Uh, no African Americans as part of the judicial or legal system. Uh, it might be tolerable in other areas, barely tolerable, but not in a justice system where the perception has to be that justice is available to all and that all people uh, of, of every race uh, and background can participate in the process. Uh, so uh, I can remember we had a vacancy on the Court of Appeals, and uh, it was in 1974, I believe. And um, Malcolm Wilson was then the governor. Nelson Rockefeller had gone on to become vice president. And I spoke to uh, then Governor Wilson and said, uh, there's an opportunity to make an appointment. Why don't we appoint uh, a black to the court? And uh, he said, who would you recommend? And I recommended Harold Stevens, who was then presiding justice of the Appellate Division First Department. And he said, would he take it? It means he'd have to run in November. And I said, I'll speak to him. And I went to his apartment um, with Ella, and uh, I asked him if he wanted to be the first black on the New York Court of Appeals. And he looked me in the eye, and he said, the first Negro on the Court of Appeals. That was very important to him. He was uh, raised in a dirt floor shack in, uh, in South Carolina. Um, and was in the cavalry during World War II. I mean, the horse cavalry. Um, went to Boston College, uh, got his law degree there, uh, and he was appointed to the court. And he was a remarkable addition to the court. Uh, he, he gave depth and breadth to our discussions with respect to so many matters because he could bring a perspective that none of us had ever had or lived through or in. And um, the tragedy was, and it also pointed out another aspect of our uh, system, 
Uh, he had a run the following November. Malcolm Wilson delivered him the Republican and conservative lines. He had the Democratic line and the liberal line. So he had all four parties, and he lost the election because Jack Fuchsberg ran a primary against him for the Democratic line. And so he had an African-American finally on the court, and he couldn't win an election statewide with all four parties behind him. Um, he and went he back he was to only there, what, nine or ten months, wasn't That's he? right. That's right. It wasn't until we had an appointed Court of Appeals that um, Mario Cuomo appointed in 1985 Fritz Alexander, uh, at the same time he appointed me as Chief Judge. And then we started trying to make some dramatic changes. So now um, you, you've got these concerns that have been bothering you really since childhood, and more so as you become a New Yorker and a, a New York judge. You become chief judge in 85 and, and w w with the ability to do something about it. Yes. So you uh, establish within, I don't know, within a year or two of becoming chief judge, I think, um, this commission, this, this first commission of its type in the, in the country, I believe. Yes. Um, can you just talk about the commission and, and your, um, why you formed it, what you, what you really thought it could do, well, and, and, and the significance of it being the first? I, I thought it could, above all other things, educate the public as to the necessity for diversity in the court. Now, mind you, it wasn't only for the African American race or for other minorities. It was for the justice system. We were the beneficiaries. Having them on the court, having them participate in the justice system was important to us, both because of the uh, intellect and understanding they could bring to the court, as well as the perception by others of a court which is capable of administering justice fairly and equally. Um, it was, it was going to be a big undertaking. I didn't want to do one of these things where you form a committee and the committee looks into something and gives you a report and you say, very nice, and then you move on uh, after a press release or a photo op. Uh, I wanted to have a real job done, first of all, to find out where and why there was this lack of diversity, and then find out how to remedy this ill. Uh, I spoke to Vernon Jordan about it. Uh, and Vernon Jordan and I discussed it. He thought it was a wonderful idea. Uh, he gave me three or four names, and one of those names was Franklin Williams. Uh, then, by pure happenstance, shortly thereafter, I was at a small dinner party with Thurgood Marshall. And Thurgood Marshall uh, was the kind of man who used to sit back and he would hold forth. And he was discussing in great length and depth um, his concerns about the black community and they were talking about um, his ultimate retirement and who would fill his seat and uh, he was uh, saying how he doesn't think it necessarily has to be uh, a, a Negro uh, so long as the person was very competent and so long as his mind and heart were in the right place and then I started talking to him about the commission and asked him for a recommendation and he didn't hesitate for a minute he said Frank Williams, but I doubt whether he can take it. He's a very busy man. Uh, so now I had heard the name twice, and I confess to my ignorance, I didn't know that much about him. I knew it was Phelps Stokes, but I didn't know his enormous, incredible background. Uh, uh, I, I don't think that uh, there are many people in the history of the Civil Rights Movement who could match his credentials, qualifications, and abilities so I called him up. Uh, I remember calling him from my house in Albany, and uh, cold call. And I introduced myself, and I told him at length what I uh, was thinking about and uh, concerned with, and asked whether he would undertake the chairmanship of it. And his first answer, and I noticed that this is quoted in the um, commission, ultimate commission report, is his answer was, you know, uh, when you start digging into this problem, you're going to create wounds, and wounds that can't be covered over or cured with a Band-Aid. I said, I understand that. 
I said, that's why I want you to do it. I said, I want someone who is not going to uh, be a, a company man. Um, Vernon and Jordan used to talk about uh, the fact that he never learned uh, negotiable instruments and bills and notes because where he lived, all you had to do was have a count in the store, the count he used to call it. And he said, uh, uh, that was where all the business was done and where the debts were uh, accumulated and uh, uh, collected. So when he went to law school, he didn't know what a check was. Um, uh, and uh, this is the kind of thing that, um, the kind of intelligence and background I wanted brought to this, someone who could understand um, the problems that are created uh, by um, not integrating and having a diverse force within the court system. Uh, he said, let's meet, and I went to um, Phelps Stokes and to his office. Um, he was very proud of his office because he had a parking place in the building. He had his own private parking place. That's the greatest thing you could have in New York City. Um, and we had a wonderful discussion, uh, and uh, there was a uh, an instant uh, bonding between us, I believe. It turns out that it was uh, very genuine. And um, he said, there are a couple of conditions that I would impose. Number one, he said, it's going to cost a million dollars to do this thing right. So I said, don't go to number two. I said, because we can't give you a million dollars. He said, I don't want your million dollars. He said, I will get the money. Uh, provided that you come with me when I get it. I said, I can't solicit funds. He said, I don't want you to do anything. Just sit in the room and let me introduce you uh, to indicate that the chief judge is behind the project. Um, number two, he said, I want to appoint my own staff. Uh, I don't want to have my office or the office of the commission uh, any way related to the court system. I want to be completely apart. And he said, I'm not going to talk to you about the progress of the commission or what we're doing or what we're not doing, except to ask you for your consent and access to the courthouses around the state, because I'm going to want to have hearings around the state. Uh, they were all very easy things to consent to, and, and he accepted the job. 